And there's the foam core that we put in. I need to wire this fax machine up. That's the bulge pump that we've got. Automatic on, manual, lived happily ever after. I'm busy adding more breakers. She was old and neglected, so we cut her to bear holes and built her up from the ground with our blood, sweat and tears. So follow our journey as we plan to sail her to new destinations and make lasting memories. Lovely day, wind as usual for PE. The miss is on board and she's helping me out to put the table in. We're prepping, here's our new posts. And thanks to Simon for bringing them through from Cape Town for us. Thanks Simon! Big thanks to Vitas for the help with the prices, always helpful. Thanks Vito! One post over here, another post over there. They're just marked out. Those are the bases that go in, they just flip over. I'll show you now. Let's get to it and drill the holes and the floor is covered in peel ply. As you can see there's the hole drilled through. And there's epoxy, that's why there's peel ply. And there's the foam core that we put in. We'll dig all of this out. And before we fill the post, we'll seal it up nicely. That's quite tough because we bought a really high density one. Ricky's mixing soup over there. <laughs> She's snug as a bug in a rug. So our table's not officially in because we have to go get specific screws and it's Sunday and everything's closed. But it works. We finally have table legs that work. Nothing ever goes to plan, does it? <laughs> Basically it's not on yet. But then this is gonna get covered in the same stuff as our countertops and it's gonna look sweet. Those posts, you just pull out the posts and then fill them. Pull them out and then the table comes out and then the table drops down into that cavity and forms a bed. So it's recessed like that and then the flooring sort of come on first and then it will just mount on top. At this stage I'm dealing with the business end of the boat. I'm on the fax machine. I need to wire this fax machine up because she draws about 150 watts when she comes on. I ran the wires from the from the DB box or from the from the switchboard to here and then I'm just going to use my Trust the old low temp solder shrinkers. So they look like that. Those of you that don't know, those are seals on the edge. That solder in the middle and the whole thing shrinks over. Let's put the connection in there. Once you're done, that's what they look like. Let's hook up for our toilet. In here. Put the business in here. So we've got the bottom of the sink. We've got some wiring that the box cover the cover on. Here's one of the water pumps and power that I need. I'm doing all these connections today. Looking everything up, plumbing and all that. And this is what the bathroom looks like now that the toilet's connected. I just need to run the, the waste hose. I haven't strapped it down to that. So that hole over there is to do the bolts to hold the toilet down. That one over there works as a wet area here. And that so wet for the shower, so that also runs a line down there, also connected to that one, which comes out to here, which that pump over there will be inside there. Let's so get everything hooked up. So all the pumps, uh, the water pumps, salt water pump, and the shower bilge, and I think that's it, is it? I want to do our flooring. <laughs> that's so expensive. <laughs> Sorry, it's coming next week. Okay. Yeah, we should have it next week. We'll be good. Speaking to all our connections. To actually get our flooring. What we're going to do now is connect the bilge pumps to the power. And you can see it's all the way down there. That's the bilge pumps that we've got. They whale pumps and we were actually fortunate they came with the boat when we bought it. And they hadn't been installed. They are hidden in one of the cabinets. So, well, super sub, smart one, 1,100, and that's gallons per hour. And there's a little sensor in there for the, for the water, so it senses the water through that. And it's got three cables. Three cables is, the brown one is your positive, the black one is this, the negative, and the white one is the bypass. So the brown one and the black one work through the sensor to activate the pump, 
and then that white one sends the pot sends out another positive signal from a switch that you switch on and turns on the pump immediately without that switch so in case you actually want it to come on without the switch activating you'll send the signal you'll send the power the positive through that one that's how i mark the wires so positive and negative and then that would be the bypass wire over there and i'm going to keep them marked like that so all on all I've got to do is keep one piece of tape on the positive and I'll take that tape off later and the negative I don't need because there's only one negative so check the length out by dropping that into the hole because the less wire the less voltage drop and lessons unnecessary so all the way nicely to the bottom leave always a little bit of extra but not too much and then cut it off so the excess of that side that's cut off cut off and then these ones I trim them short uh, three wires and our three wires you can see there's more than enough and our little packets of connectors Okay, let's stop with the positive to our marked positive that we have. As you can see, this cable, 2.5 mil, and that's only a 1.5 mil that comes with the pump, but I wired everything in 2.5, and the reason for that is for voltage drop and amperage carry over the length. So push them into one another that they tie in like that. make sure that that center lead piece melts properly if it doesn't melt properly these things are crap if it does melt properly these things are excellent Ricky attached all of the connections and melted the solders you just hold it still for a few seconds so that once it's cooling down you don't break the, the bond pick our hose 40 that's manual Perfect to the bottom, and now we're gonna get this sucker on there. Ricky heated up the pipe to be able to fit the fitting inside, and once the plastic cools down, it contracts against the fitting, which helps prevent any leaks and also attach the clamp. I usually use a number eight socket on this, but just place mine because it's not in the box. But um, so yeah, but that works well. Pump wired up, connected to that, and now we'll just connect it to the bottom of the of the hull. So take a cable tie, medium size, don't bend it sharp there, so leave a little bit of slack on there. Take that over. Don't zip tie or two ties, you don't want to crush the wire. It's just to secure it. It's all nice and neat, strapped up, cable ties, and then that will go straight into the bilge and we also connect that cable to a bilge alarm but yeah and there goes the through hole we'll go in there and this one takes up this which is for the manual al manual if you're portuguese you understand this one not automatic al manual for for manual we just make sure that this one can have no leaks because if you have got leaks she ain't gonna suck So in this cabinet, we've got our manual. Yep, sucking. So our manual will go into this bulge also. The automatic one, manual, lived happily ever after. Automatic and manual. <laughs> we started laying up our solid fiber glass sheets for our backing plate for our windlass and a few other deck fittings we also have. And we also started on our head door. Put those layers on there, and then tomorrow we'll come and pull off the field ply and do a couple of more layers until we get the thickness that we want to get out of. Plugs, that plug plus this plug, all the 220 plugs come on at the same time. So we need one that says plugs. We started connecting everything onto our control panel and labeling it.
what you're doing. I'm busy adding more breakers because these panels don't come full of breakers. For the lower amperage stuff. I'm hooking up the little LED light, the indicator light. And the stuff is really compact. Are you winning? Eventually, I win. I need, need to extend most of the, uh, the positives because I want it to come into a nice harness like this all along the side. So for that reason I need to extend all the positives. And then the negatives come to a buzz bar inside here. Yeah? Some of them I also need to extend. What I do, I use these. They shrink and solder wrap at the same time with two waterproof seals on them. And you can get them from 3M or from Amazon also sells them. What did you do, Moses? I developed the floor there by the toilet. Yeah, see, he found this phone there on the toilet and brought it here. Yeah. All you people that, that wonder, yes, there are good people in this world. And we've got a solid team here. So what we're doing now is um, we're sizing up to put these crimps on. Leave their ferrules. So what I do is I size it to see how far back it goes. And I just give it a little bit extra. In addition to that, take the ferrule. Put it on, push it all the way in, and then we'll crimp this tomorrow. We've got the crimping machine, we're gonna borrow it from my friend Basil. Okay, size it up, and key to get is the same size as the buzz, buzz bars that you've got, or as the plugs that you're connecting into. So one thing I learned quite quickly was that you need a pair of these, and you get a bigger pair. These things cut cable like no tomorrow, no matter what thing. I mean, we're cutting, this is 32 square millimeter cable, and it's cutting right through that with no hassles. Over that we'll put a heat shrink section. See, I've already made this one red. That's a heat shrink that, that I put on there just to label that it's uh, positive. That one's also positive. And then I'll put a heat shrink over it so that it looks like one of these. Nicely done up and really solid. That's what it looks like before we crimp it. That's what it looks like after the crimp. And now we're gonna put some red um, shrink wrap over that. Hey, this crimp fails, that was, was Simone. That was me. One, once we've crimped it, we take one of these heat shrinks, it comes in a strip like this. Just take a pair of scissors, cut a piece off, and then it looks like that. Take the sleeve, put it over. And there's it done. It looks like that, then you know it's good. Right about now is the time to press subscribe. We did all the other connections as well. So black goes on the negative and red goes on the positive, for those that you don't know. I believe we've got them all. Simone's busy prepping the, the little wood pieces to varnish them. And you can see she's put in the doors already. And she's just getting all of that prepped up nicely so she can varnish it. I think she's going to put like five or six coats on. How many coats are you putting? I'll start off with five and see if I need a six. So I've got to pull out all the gas piping. It's not on code. Uh, we had the gas guy here yeah, to make double sure that everything I did was alright and he said nope. I've got to pull out all the pipelines and because the flexible hose that we use, the orange one, is not code beyond two meters so we can only run it for two meters of length. So he gave us new pipe, he said run that in and then he'll come tomorrow and he'll crimp everything in. So we're going to pull it out and hopefully put the new pipe he's brought. The stuff he bought's a lot stiffer but he says it's very good for using in the marine industry. What my game was? The full The full
stay tuned till next week where we epoxy in our backing plate for our windlass to make sure all our lights are connected and finish up our gas connections. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe below if you haven't already and don't forget to give us a big thumbs up because it helps us out a lot. If you'd like to support us in our production, you can make a one-time donation via PayPal or join our amazing patron family. The link is provided in the description below. Thanks to our awesome new patrons, Roger Peterson, Halvard Sinners, Arnold Taylor and Ron Snoss.